Hey, Mitch. Oh, hey, Ed. How are you today, uh, buddy? I'm, I'm great. I'm so excited about doing the final countdown. We've never done something like this before. It's awesome. What do you mean we haven't done anything like this before? Well, we haven't done a song before by a classic, you know, rock band. I think it's going to be oh, fantastic. Oh, no, we're not doing a, that, that song, not the final countdown song. That's not yeah, what Yeah, I yeah, the final countdown, you know. No, I know this song, but we're not doing that. But hey, but the final countdown. No, it's a movie. Hey, don't you what, know? They made a movie about the song. No, they didn't even get a movie about the song. It was about uh, an aircraft carrier going back in time, man. You know, like the Philadelphia Experiment, man. But but that that sounds that sounds absolutely stupid. How can a how can a well there was a big storm? Through... No, 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 no. In the movie, there was like a storm, and it like sucked the the USS Nimitz into the past. Don't you remember? No, but I got all dressed up and everything. Well, you always dress up. That's your problem. But you you never heard about about a time storm? No. Well, what's it look like? Like that. Let's just start the show. Hi, this is Ed Dollister. And this is Mitch Howard. And welcome to another exciting episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for joining us. If you are a regular viewer, thanks for coming back. Hey, Mitch, before we start today's topic, how can you find out a little bit more about what we do? Oh, Ed, it is simple as getting aboard a giant nuclear aircraft carrier and heading back 40 years to go and fight the Japanese Imperial Army. All you got to do is smash that button below with a lot of vengeance, and then you could just be a subscriber to the Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure and go with us as we travel through time every single time on YouTube. Not every week, not every month, whenever we feel like it, but you are part of our band, and you're going to see us talk about movies, TV, and all the rest. But not rock songs, sadly, but we are talking about the 1980 movie, The Final Countdown. I really um enjoyed this movie. I watched it again on Apple TV. I um rented it last night just to get a bit of a refresher, and I really enjoyed it. I've actually got my trusty book here so should we do a quick review let's find out what she had to say some 40 years ago all <laughs> right the final countdown the uss nimitz the mighty nuclear powered aircraft carrier is thrown back in time and confronts the fateful japanese attack on pearl harbor this clever plot idea generates rousing drama and excitement and the authentic technical nature of the film provides rich and colorful details of the ship's awesome power Douglas is outstanding as the Nimitz skipper who is faced with the dilemma of whether he should meddle with history. Director Don Taylor stars Kirk Douglas, Martin Sheen, Catherine Ross, James Farentino, three stars. That's a pretty glowing review. I know. That is pretty good for her. Unfortunately, the movie, that three stars is probably more than the box office was. but that's Yeah, it only story. made $16 million, but... Yeah. It actually holds up pretty well. I don't know if there were too many, like watching it back with a 2024 lens, you sort of see those time travel um, paradox sort of stories all the time, but mm. no pun intended. But back then, I think that was pretty fresh for a movie. What do you think? Did you see it in the uh, cinemas? You know what? I did see it in the cinemas. And you know what the weird thing about this movie was? It played in second run theaters as a first week show, which was huh. very bizarre because we had your, your movie plexes, even back in the late seventies, early eighties, they had, you know, four or five screens. Now they have like 15 or 20, but those were all the first run theaters, you know, the big star Wars Raiders, they all went to that. And then a couple of weeks after they were done in those, they would go to the little mom and pop neighborhood theaters and they'd be like a dollar 50 to go see. It was cheaper because it had been playing for so long. Mm -hmm. The final countdown was one of the only two times I can ever remember a movie premiering in the second run theaters. I don't know why. And I remember the poster and the ads on TV, like the USS Nimitz is going back to, you know, save history. You know, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. And my dad who grew up in the, during the war, he, he wanted to see this. He was like, we're going to go see this. It's a really good idea for a movie. And it is. So he's the reason why we went and we went opening night. And the funny thing is it was almost like going back in time to the forties or the fifties. Cause this little neighborhood theater that used to show 
Marilyn Monroe movies and all that before the multiplexes, there was a line of people down the road to get into the theater because this was like a big event. There it was a first run movie that hadn't been years since they had such a thing. Mm -hmm. And it was like a premiere and we went to it and my, uh, we watched it. And I got to say, I, I, I was intrigued by the concept of it. And there are some parts of it where you were hoping it was going to be a little different. You know, they're not going to obviously change the history, but you were like, maybe something will happen. But it had me going. I mean, I must have been 12 or 13 when it came out and I was into it and the effects were good at the time. I mean, you know, we didn't have CGI and all that stuff, but Kirk Douglas was fine. I think Peter Douglas, I think his son is the producer on this yeah, thing. Yeah, that's right? right. And also is it's also produced by Lloyd Kaufman. Yes. Trauma um, from Troma Productions. Of, he's in, you know, he's in the movie too. He's got he a small does have part. a supporting role as well. And you've got Martin Sheets. He's there as an observer. James Farentino. So and you mentioned Catherine Ross, who was like a big heartthrob because she was from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. That's right. And the graduate as well. Graduate. Had, yeah. She was had Charles else. Durning in there as well from 1941. A yeah. Senator. But there's another actor that is going to go become famous. It wasn't, was it Jeff Goldblum? There was somebody else. No, in no, there was Ron. Um, I think it's Ron O'Neill who was in it from Superfly. So he played Superfly. in. The oh, early okay. 80s. Yeah. Okay. And he was it's like the uh, second in command. You had um, the other familiar face. If you're a MASH TV viewer, a Soon Tech O who um, played the, um, the, the pilot, soldier. the Japanese yeah, pilot, the pilot. Yeah. who was actually, he was actually Korean, but it, I suppose doesn't yeah. matter. They didn't, didn't matter at that, that point, but Jeez, they um, had an English guy playing Charlie Chan back then. I mean, he, well, it, <laughs> that matters. But anyway, no, it wasn't that. No, but I'm saying anyway. You know. Sorry. So, um, so you uh, had a really good cast, a really intriguing story, and I suppose the the real star of it was the USS Nimitz, which they actually yes. filmed on. You got to, a lot of there was a lot of um the crew actually got to act in it, and you got mm -hmm. to see it. And that yeah. was essentially the set for 90% yeah. of the, the movie, but it was really fascinating to see how they, you know, unload and load planes or jets and take them off yep. and to yep. see all the working. So that's and long really before, long before Top Gun made it like fashionable. This was like almost a documentary because yes. you're right. I mean, we didn't see stuff like that. That was still new technology, a nuclear powered aircraft carrier. And then we had the whole cold war thing going on with the Russians. So it's like, look what's protecting our nation. This massive floating. Our, oh my our gosh, it was, it was story, huge. You know? And huge. Um, it was just uh, really interesting to uh, see all those behind the scenes mechanics on how they did that. What was also good was the um, aerial footage was really interesting. Yeah. One, you didn't get to see that too often back then with modern fighter jets. You got to see a lot of, you know, war, from war movies like Midway. And I think they reused um, Tora, some of the footage Tora, from Tora, Tora, Tora. Tora. Yeah, that was um, a big one. But seeing modern jets with, you know, those Japanese Mitsubishi Zeros, or they weren't actually yeah. Zeros, they were um, planes that looked close to those Zeros, yeah, yeah, yeah. was really quite exciting. You were talking well, you about know what the, the... Oh, yeah, go I was going to say, I did see at one point over the years, there was like a behind the scenes documentary. I don't know if it's on the DVD or whatever. I never bought the DVD, but they were showing the making of it. And the, the I don't know, the wind speed from the F-16s or whatever, when they would fly past those old propeller planes, it was like the the, the draft, I guess, if you want to call it, from the, the, the jet going by. It caused the other planes to lose control. I mean, there's sometimes the, the canopy got ripped off one of them mm -hmm. and the plane was like spiraling down until the pilot gained control of it. It was if that was ever a real dogfight, I don't think the old airplanes would have much of a chance because the jets were like literally flying circles around these things. It was kind of a little scary there. So, Oh, but, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, they did um, encounter a, um, there was some sort of emergency going on at the time uh, which they got to film. I think that's when the uh, plane was, they had to get the net out um, yeah, to hook, stop the, yeah. stop the plane. I was just going to say the effects, which are pretty cool. You know, they still mm. look all right. Um, using uh, lasers and smoke, um, which you'd see in a nightclub today, but you know, yeah. it was a big budget uh, movie back then. Guess, do you know who did these uh, visual effects? Uh, was it a discotheque? Uh, no, it was Morris Binder. Now, do you remember who? Oh, that from is? the James Bond opening sequence, yes. that guy, the, the naked women flying by, and you yep. know the, the the silhouettes and such with the smoke. Yeah, absolutely. So he did huh. uh, the visual effects for it, and and they were still quite effective. And um, 
and in HD, they you know they look, look pretty good. I think it's you know sold you know, by the. It's actors. no damnation alley, that's for well, sure. Well, no, not much is except for uh, this episode that you can watch up here, of course, uh, which we cover. It's directed by Don Taylor. Um, Don Taylor also directed um, Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Oh, and he also did Damien, The Omen Two, which is not Ooh. no not too it's bad. Not that you know? bad. No. And um. We talk about merchandise, really not much merchandise for this film. They did release the um, soundtrack album. Oh, was it? Who's it? Jerry Goldsmith? No, it wasn't. It was someone who I've never heard of and I can't think of their name off the top of my head. So, oh, that guy. Yes. But that guy, but they did release a novelization of it written. I know this. I have okay. it. You know who wrote it? I do. Yeah, but Martin share with Caden, the audience. Martin Caden. Who's famous for writing Cyborg, which is the uh, since the Six Million Dollar Man. That's what started the Six Million Dollar Man. He wrote three Cyborg books, but he wrote this one. And Indiana Jones fans are going to know him because he also wrote two Indiana Jones novels: Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates, and, and Indiana Jones eggs? and the Lost Package. No, it, hang on, that's that's my story. Um, the 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 dinosaur eggs. Did he do the, the dinosaur di eggs? Uh, well, no, that was a good one. So that was Don McGregor, okay. uh, Rob McGregor, Rob McGregor. Yes, Martin Caden wrote some really bad Indiana Jones. Stuff. Well, they were just a little bit heavy in detail. They were dry. Like they were very on. He, he likes his airplanes. If you want to read like a manual about how an airplane works, you go read these books. But in his adaptation of the Final Countdown, because I did read it, he was trying to suggest that the time storm was really almost extraterrestrial. Ah. Aliens. Plus. Well, that, that could be. And, you know, and I think Martin Sheen's character alludes to it, you know, saying he doesn't know if it's this or that or it's little green men. I think he says something like that. And, you know, that's good. And it's kind of good that they don't explain sort of no. what it is because i think no. today in movies they'd explain exactly what it is and what i liked about it is the crew of the nimitz um mm. they sort of just accept it and go well this is our mission this is what we need to do oh, yeah. let's try and figure it out and the time paradox and there's a little i won't give away the twist ending because it's a 44 year old no movie. because some of our listeners uh viewers probably spoiler alert it. so okay all right anyway fine. So I'm just going to say that the dog is a key member of that. Oh, sport. the dog is the MVP. He, him floating while a helicopter try. He's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, he was. He's fantastic. So it's, it's definitely worth, um, it's definitely worth watching. You can um, rent it or buy it. I think they, they did do a Blu-ray release as well. Yeah, they did a couple years ago. Yeah. You know what else? Oh, we should, I sort of allude to since you've got it on your t-shirt just quickly is um the philadelphia experiment which came yes. out four years After later with michael perret um yes. and Eddie the cruisers of, yes michael. and um and um uh greatest american hero as well he was oh william katz in that yeah he was a, no he was a student in um michael perret was one of william katz's students Oh yeah, and the greatest America. I was gonna was. say he wasn't in the Philadelphia. But that's experiment. sort of like the Philadelphia experiment. Uh, that's sort of like uh, the final countdown in reverse, where instead of yes. starting in 1980 and going back, back, that one disappeared long ago. The USS right. El Eldridge, I believe it is. It just we don't know disappeared. We might guys do that bodies. one at uh, some point, but you can find out all the movies and TV shows that we've covered. How can you do that, Mitch? Uh, I would say one just needs to peruse the time device known as YouTube, and you can go and find shows that Ed and I did in the past, but watch them now through the, the magic future. of the internet. That's by right. By simply looking for Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure, subscribing to it, notifying it when a new episode comes on, liking it so your friends can know about us. That's about That'll be it. great. It helps us all out. In fact, we're almost we're pretty close to ninety five thousand views of our channel, which I think is pretty cool. Let me tell you, my eyes are killing me from just watching it every day. But it's <laughs> what I could do for King and Country. Yeah, that's why I'm wearing sunglasses today. So, mm -hmm. signing off. This is Ed Dollister, and this is Mitch Allen, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>